Uh, okay. okay, well, thank you, Alice. Uh, yeah, thanks also for still finding time for me in all the senses. <laughs> and so last but not least, Swahili. What about Swahili, right? Beyond the Rift Valley somehow. I also try to be uh, as quick as possible to, to, um, to stick to our time schedule. Uh, first of all, what can you see at the moment? Uh, let me try to go on a screen mode like that. So it should be bigger now, I guess, right? Okay, well, good. Um, well, actually, I think I have to say, uh, when it comes to the state of the art, uh, as you might have all imagined, uh, there has been quite a bit studied on uh, riddles in Swahili. Um, I, I started uh, in a certain way of researching, uh, yeah, all that was available and it came to my curiosity, yeah, plenty of good articles or um, works to refer to. I won't go into much detail so far. Uh, what I didn't do at the same time was probably to contribute to your beautiful database and reaching it with uh, all the examples I've come through, but uh, I do promise that this could be something I can do over Christmas time, probably, so I felt bad to hear only three, but uh, yes, I think now it's a challenge, we have to go beyond the number of the Raku <laughs> ones, and uh, be sure that somehow this could be useful for all of us, uh, I think for comparative study actually there is a lot to say also when it comes to wider of course field like in Bantu languages because I really came through very interesting work that have been done and well needless to say also works uh, concerning other languages even beyond in a certain way the African continent needless to say the Finnish school is always there even when it comes to riddles uh, but now let's let me just uh, zoom into my, let's say, own data or documentation that I started exactly when the workshop also started because it uh, really caught my interest and attention, though I've never worked on this genre before. Um, uh, and yeah, let's say that first of all, I, I look back into a precise collection published by Harris in uh, 1971. Um, who mainly has worked on a, a collection of manuscript poems uh, stored at SOAS, belonging to the Taylor collection. Uh, poems, Swahili poems in Arabic script, uh, interestingly enough, dating back to, um, uh, actually I'd say, yeah, 20th century, probably also late 19th century. Uh, the particularity of this collection is that uh, the readers themselves are master poets. Um, so we have names, we do, we do know them by name. Uh, and they are all from the so-called Mjiwakale, so the so-called Mombasa Old Town District um, in Kenya. So you might assume already based on that, that the language that is spoken and is used for the readers themselves is Kimbita. Uh, so very often also, uh, in addition to the fact that the genre already is enigmatic, but the dialect definitely doesn't make it easier to, to grasp uh, for a non-fluent uh, speaker of Kimbida probably. And then in addition to this collection that I was curious to look back because there were some similarities I came across through, I myself sort of started collecting a, a very layman uh, recordings, uh, basically from th two other places, uh, Lamu and Pate. Um, so in the Lamu collection, we do have roughly 25 Itendawili, which have been recorded uh, through Mahmoud Mao by a teacher of primary school, uh, together with three girls, which I do assume are her pupils, so to speak, but I didn't make further inquiries into that. And the party collection has come through Biri Dai, a poet I came uh, to get to know a few years ago, who uh, made some recordings for me uh, together with her three children. Um, yeah, and I'll show you piece and bits later on, uh, inshallah. Uh, definitely what, what has been curious to notice uh, by comparing, if you want, these very contemporary recordings that uh, myself I collected and the more literary and old one has been this variability and fluidity of, uh, of the genre as such uh, across the time, right? That was very much fascinating to my eyes as well. Well, being a literary scholar, if you want. Um, what about the genre when it comes to Swahili? Well, the meaning of Kitendawili is quite clear. Uh, uh, 
kila munto na juwa tayari. So basic case there, we do know about this non-fixed form. Uh, I mainly refer to what Kellen and Eastman have also worked, I mean, have said uh, in that direction. Um, definitely you can grasp it at the idea that there is a trap and you should be clever than the reader, right? Um, to not to miss it. Um, the interesting thing came the moment I talked to my personal informant on Pate, so Biri Dai, uh, who said, no, we don't use Kitten Dawili nor Ortega. Uh, we do say Chondovi. Uh, so actually the Mwenyekiti says Chondovi and the Mwenye Kusikiliza, so the audience will answer Chakweche. Now about the meaning of these two terms, yeah, well, one could uh, need further uh, investigation. Um, it seems that, um, well, uh, we can comment on that later, probably better not to go into too many details now, but I think there are some Kipate influences in, into the terms as such. And if uh, the moment I asked Biri Dai about a bit the context, if ever this is something she was used to also uh, when she was a child, of course the answer is yes. Uh, she used to listen to them uh, through her grandmother um, at night or let's say in the evening time. So this goes in agreement also with what I heard from other presentation earlier on. But uh, in addition to Chondo Chakwete, or let's say the most standard form, Kitenda Willi Tega, uh, now we make a step behind and we, yeah, we journey a bit uh, back in time uh, with these very much related or correlated genres that are the Mafumbo Mafumbo, or also known with this uh, infinity form, Kufumba na Kufumboa, to tie and to untie. And what is interesting, well, Harris has written quite a bit on that, on this genre, uh, precisely in his article, uh, The Literary Reader in Swahili. Um, he tries to offer, in a certain way, uh, a two different sub -genre, genres, though, in fact, uh, there are some uh, overlapping between the two. So the distinction is not so linear as you wish it could be. But I think what is interesting for us to bring uh, to the surface once again is this definitely this idea, this concept of uh, um, uh, a more extended enigmatic dialogue verse, uh, which uh, takes place between two poets in a sort of rivalry way. And this idea of Kufunganyama, this is quite new probably, right? Uh, he, he gives a, an insight into the context we have to think about. Uh, so a Kijiji, or let's say, uh, um, yes, a, a little village where there is a Chifu, and um, the Chifu would have invited the so-called Malenga, right, to his home, and he would have wished to divide among them gifts of money and um, from a D-shaped gong, exactly. Uh, before doing that, though, uh, he would have given an enigma, an enigma poem to be, to be sung. And this enigma poem was precisely called uh, Kufunga Nyama, so tying up an animal. Uh, so what was happening was that the Malenga, the poets, um, uh, had to solve this uh, enigma. And uh, well, in case the poet succeeded, then the chifu would have um, beaten his word as a sign that uh, the puzzle uh, had been solved. Um, and the poet himself would have been invited to compose a poem in praise of himself particularly enough. In case the poet uh, or the poet, let's say the poets who would have failed, then um, to clothe some shame on them or on him, uh, there would have been the invitation to compose a short song poem, Kumbi Kaguni. Uh, Guni gives exactly this idea of shame, though more literary means exactly when somebody writes a poem which is not um, uh, which is not good, which it doesn't read well because has some um, uh, defective verses in, 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 the, in, in, in the sense of not having the good rhyme or the right amount of syllables. Now, I'll, uh, I want to show you roughly how the structure of these older, so to say, text uh, um, uh, looks like. Uh, as I said, we have two parts, but we have to think about these two parts um, uh, correlated absolutely to each other as if it was a question and a jawab and uh, answer jawabu, but they are way longer than the more contemporary Kitanda Willi we are used to think about. 
So just look for a second at the par part one, that is the real fumbo, so the enigma, the puzzle that has to be solved. You will see that um, the structure is quite complex in the sense that uh, it, it's a poem, we said, right? So the fumbo is interpolated through the poem, through the stanza, uh, little by little, if you want. Um, just to give you a very general insight into that, uh, in the first stanza, we have the fumbo, so uh, the poem that poses the riddle. Uh, and the riddle, particularly enough, is not a riddle to core per se. It's a riddle that is part of a refrain. So we will have that riddle at the very beginning in the first stanza, but also in the, in the last stanza. I'll show you the example. There might be in between stanzas which don't have anything to say uh, with regard to the riddle, like stanza two and three, very broad religious uh, things. Whereas stanza four, five, six, we have little by little some hints about the, the, the riddle. So what is it? Is it an animal? It's not like, it's rather, he or she looks rather like this. Um, and the particularity is also in, in the very end um, where the poet will say uh, as sort of closing formula, something along that line, nihino ni yakikazi. So this is his work, like prompt for the answer or inviting the, the, the other poet to guess the answer. Semeni uh, nikitugani or nikitugani jawabu. So what is, uh, uh, what sort of thing is the answer in a certain way? And um, yeah, let me just show you precisely what I was commenting on so far. So this is exactly the fumbo only, okay? We don't have the answer yet. This is just a way to uh, prompt, uh, to, to, un to untie the, the, um, the reader. Uh, you can see that refrain in bold for you in stanza one. Um, so it starts very in a very poetic way, of course, for those who can enjoy the Swahili way better, because you can see that also the rhyme pattern, right? And um, uh, well, and there is even a pattern when it comes to syllables. So in this case, the refrain of this particular Lifumbo is Nyamanjungo uh, Sindani Nikitugani Jawabu. And you can see that this Nyamanjungo Sindani comes back in the end of the poem stanza number seven, even six, even before, right? Um, so, ndiye mwenye kifurushi nyama yungo sindani, stanza six, stanza seven, once again, the conclusion. So now I told you everything, tell me what's the thing. Nyama yungo sindani, kitu gani jawabu. So it's a riddle more than that, it's a refrain. What about the answer? Uh, again, a longer answer. It's not just one sentence at all. Um, uh, we have a poem made of six stanza, uh, the opening formula through which the other poet answers to the previous one is, for instance, Sahibu Yakoswala Fumbo Nimelidurosi. So I have studied the enigma, Fumbo Nimelidurosi. And uh, it's interesting that the, the poet shows that he got what is it, but goes even in this case quite slowly by using also some similes, like I got what is it, it is like huh? Zandege Kamateuzi. So probably it's like that of a peacock, for instance, or in Sansa 4, you can see Mfano wa Kungurasi. So it's also giving another sort of comparison. It's like the fruit of the uh, Mukungurasi tree. Uh, it's not, so what is not, what is it? It's not the liver of the human body, nor a goat or a horse. Uh, stanza five, as you can see, finally, he says what he thinks it is. So, Nyamahiyo Maruzuku, so this blessed meat, it's the gizzard, my dear. And the, street, the particularity of the tone comes back to stan in stanza six, because you can see that the poet sort of challenges his own answer, or he wants to challenge the poet by saying, well, and if you don't believe me, then we can ask even to somebody else. Let's, let's ask to uh, the other poet, the friend Karama, that would be another poet, and let's see what he has to say about that, right? Uh, Firigizi is the term in Swahili that also caught some attention to my eyes, because I was wondering about the the etymology of it as such. It doesn't does sound completely a Bantu term, I must say, but I wanted to check in my saclo, but uh, well, I, I didn't, but I'm sure that probably now we have even answers already. A few words, if I may, very quickly about the more contemporary now riddling section I was totally telling you about. A uh, few general observation. Well, uh, definitely I also didn't manage to see that there is a proper tune taking. 
Um, but in a certain way, yes, the videos show that uh, after several riddles set by the Moenikiti, so to say, there might be a sort of invitation from the Moenikiti uh, to, to, to invite a precise person among the audience to, to deliver his own riddle to the others in a certain way. Uh, whereas the first collection, so the Patean one, uh, seems to me very spontaneous in the way it is performed. Uh, the Lamo collection, I had the impression that somehow the teacher herself was picking examples from a book, strange enough, because it was less uh, quick. Um, now, a bit about the structure then from, from the riddling session that I had from Pater, uh, the opening formulas, the Chondovi itself, um, Sometimes the Moenikiti could uh, invite for the answer by saying Ninini at the end. If the answer is right, uh, the Moenikiti will say Amepata or Amepata plus the name of the addressee, Amepata Muhammad, for instance. If the answer is wrong, then uh, uh, the Moenikiti will say Ziyo or Umekosa. And if the wrong answer is given three times, then the Moenikiti will say uh, the, the so-called Nipemnji, right? Give me a city. So we have a new section that starts the so-called town story. And during the town story, it's true that the reader mentioned probably the name of somebody in the recording. He, she was mentioning my name. So she was saying the reader meant, uh, what well, she was saying, Anna. Um, and then she was mentioning a possible country. Those that I encountered were China, uh, Saudi, Malindi and provides uh, the solution to the riddle in the very end. Strange and interesting enough, when the solution is given, hopefully I can show you a piece, uh, the intonation of the Monikiti of the riddle changes a bit. Like to say, come on, you didn't get it. Nimafua uh, or Nimbua, like to say, how did you get it? And there is a more stronger intonation in the very, very end. Among a few that uh, I uh, that have been elicited from the um, uh, layman recording, here we have uh, Papo Pekete, and the answer is Machumbo. You can hear a huge pate <laughs> dialect in there. Machumbo would be uh, Mama ni Pakache. Uh, here there is a Mama ni Pakache. Uh, the answer is Kitanda, or Mama ni Leke, and still the answer would be the same Kitanda. Kuna uh, wanangu kimpigawatu tele. This was uttered uh, by one of the children that was nice as well. Uh, and the answer is ngoma. So kuna wanangu kimpiga watu tele. Ni, or even better, nina wanangu akilia watu tega. And the answer is mbua. I comment on a few of these examples in the very end. A uh, very nice one also. Letter F, Nina Nyumba Yangu, Wageni Wangu Tele, Wameva Kofia, Ninini Kibiriti. So, um, yes. And uh, when it comes to the, the recording from Lamo, what changed? Well, I noticed that there might be a sort of mini section within uh, the whole section, as if you say Kitenda Willi Tega, Kitenda Willi Tega twice. And then you have a sequence of three, one after the other, very quickly. They were extremely quick in answering, like as if they were trained for, I don't know, reciting the Quran, probably. Amazing. Uh, and uh, very often, if the answer is right, uh, you will hear the teacher saying bizuri. Um, let me check if there is something else. Oh, and in case, yes, in case the riddle has been sort of uh, um, spontaneously um, given, delivered by one of the girls, then the Moenikiti still will play this role of checking whether um, the answer was right by re-asking uh, to the girls. So, Bizuri Ame Pata, and the audience will say Dio. Um, so the, the isolated example that you can see here, Nyanya Nampigam Chafu, or Nyumba Yangu na Madirisha Madogo, or Baba Meza na Mungu Moya, Mungu, sorry, to you, Moya, they, um, they are those that were uttered by the girls. Let me check if I can, um, yes, I think, uh, well, I probably I wouldn't, uh, how, well, yeah, let me proceed. I don't think that from this, perspective I can ever play a video so I, I start saying like that just a few things uh, about the logic and the imagery that I, I could notice into there 
call, well, um, when it comes to how to group them, I was inspired by what has been said by Cole and Bouchard in these uh, the riddles in uh, riddles in Bantu languages, because he referred to this idea, of course, to group them by semantic domain based on their own answers. So in our case, we would we could have possibly such a kind of grouping. Um, and uh, well, numbers and numerals, I, these are also things, kind of answers that I have encountered in the literary ones, the, the let's say the, the older ones. Um, I also notice absolutely something that it comes of that concerns personification as also has been said before. So this idea that yoga is basically a person or that uh, kibiriti are basically watu or let's say wageni. Uh, and I also thought very much about the cultural references because it, a lot has been said about uh, riddles as something a bit universal that, I mean, very often you could hear about a few everywhere you are, but this Nina Monangwa Kilia Watutega, well, in another context, probably a more westernized one, uh, it couldn't be not so quick the answer to think about Mbua, whereas in that context, I can imagine this is something logical to think about. So what uh, people will go and swap the, 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 the rain, right, uh, in case it falls, because it's something that, um, yeah, it's normal to do. Uh, so this made me think about some cultural reference and some more, so to say, cultural oriented than others, probably. And particularly because sometimes we might ha also have references to when you want to offer a sort of a simile or metaphor or comparison, you might refer to precise tree name of trees or uh, things that you, uh, you, jinga, <laughs> you definitely don't get or don't know, so to say. <laughs> 